Hi everyone and welcome to Rage Print. I'm Andy and this is episode 19 of my chopper build. And in this episode we're going to start building, uh, start painting, sorry, the uh, the body. Um, it should be fairly simple. It's just a couple of colours and a cylinder. However, it is very hot outside and um, I suspect the paint's going to dry quite quickly and might dry a bit too quickly for me to work with, but we'll see. So why don't you join me and see how we get on. Right, so I've taken the front wheel off, and um, what else have I done? I've taken the gear ring off, um, and I wasn't going to do it originally, and then I realised that in order to get this utility arm on, I need to take that screw out. The only way to get to that screw is through this hole, which is covered up by that ring. So that's got to come off. So I've taken that off. Um, I'm just debating whether to take that out or not. I think I should. I don't want to get spray paint over the electronics. Um, just means disconnecting the speakers and that from the slip ring. And I'm trying to remember how I got a screwdriver there. I must have somehow. Um, yeah, it's only held up by two screws. Um, so yeah, I, I will. I think I will take that out. Well, no, I, I am going to take that out. It'd be silly to leave it in. I don't want to get it. The other alternative is to just cover the whole thing up with um, with paper, so it's protected. Do you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a ring of paper here, mask and tape it down because this bit is you don't see this bit when the ring's on. I mean, yeah, obviously the top, the very top gets cut painted, but I can cover the inside up. And that'll protect that. It's going to be upside down anyway. I'm going to paint it upside down um, so I get the skirt. So as long as I block the bottom of the skirt up as well, for the same reason, and that should be fine. Now, there are holes for the speakers, so I can't help the fact that yeah, the, spe the speakers are glued in. Mm, actually, no, the speakers aren't, are they? They're screwed in. I could just remove the speakers as well. Um, it's the amount of effort, isn't it, to take everything out just to put it all back in again? Let me have a think about it, and then we'll we'll see what happens. Right, I took them out. <laughs> I decided it was worth the effort just to, you know, it was more effort to cover them up and stop them getting painted than to just take them out. So I put the screws back in, um, back where the speakers were, and back in there as well, and on those speakers as well, because I know what happened. I'll lose the screws and I can't remember what size they were. Um, so I think that's now ready. Um, I will be painting the dome ring as well. Um, I think it's silver. Yeah, I'm fairly sure it's silver. Um, and then obviously this sort of painted. I'm going to do, probably do the front foot at the same time just to keep things easy. And uh, electronics boards now over there. I'm hoping when I put it back in, it all works. Um, so yeah, let's um, start puttying, filling gaps, making sure it all looks good. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. You need to take, need to take this out. So I'll do that in a minute. Um, actually no, I'm going to leave it in there because I have a resin one, I'll put the resin one back in so if that gets covered up it doesn't matter, at least it's holding the bearings in um, so yeah, let's get puttying right then, uh, as you can see I've been at it with the putty so I've done the bottom and around the edges on here um, the difficulty I'm finding now is remembering what's actually supposed to be a panel line and what's a join line um, so, like, so obviously that's a join line there between the two colours but then there's a panel line there so I've got to be careful not to uh, merge the two. I mean Mike's done a job of wonderful job of cutting it so that a cut is not a panel line which makes it easier to fill although I kind of wouldn't maybe it'd be easier if the panel line was the cut because then you could hide it better. Um, now obviously I've been at this for nearly a year or just over a year so I've forgotten things like um, the step change here because I can't see it it's underneath. Um, 
which means I'm not too fussed about fixing it other than just gap filling um, I'm not too fussed about trying to level it out because if I've forgotten and I didn't notice every time I've been using chopper nobody else is really going to notice um, what I have done is gap filled around here where the, the two levels of the plastic are different where they're meeting so I gap filled that and obviously gap filled all the um, the join marks so you can still just about see them um, so I've done the same around the body as well um, here it gets a bit more interesting because you are trying to work out what is a panel line and what isn't um, it's less on the front it's more on the back spin it around so you can see here I've been you know you've got the join mark across here and he's filling um, and here there was a massive no was it oh, I can't even see it now here we go there's a massive gap here where uh, there was a bit of warp bit of lifting from the bed um, so that's filled that I mean you can still just about see it but I can always give it another coat of putty or the spray putty will fill it and, and fix that um, so I've done the sides I've done the ring uh, not the ring the skirt sorry uh, I just need to let that dry so I can turn it over and do the top of the dome ring itself um, and then shall I give it a sand I might get a ray light sand before doing a spray putty because I don't want the I don't want like the rough height of this to be the level at which the spray putty is trying to get to. Um, the other thing I need to do, I don't know if you noticed when I was spinning the, the spinning the droid around, uh, I need to chop that. So I'm going to do that now while I remember. Um, that one's all right. Might get it with the sanding and that will level that out so you don't see it. Um, yeah. So leave that at least let that bit be dry so I can turn it over and do the other side and chop that bit. Yeah, we're getting there. Oh, um just in case you're wondering what I'm using. I'm using uh, that. So that's a Vallejo plastic putty. Um we used it on Loz's droids a few weeks ago, a few months ago even now. And we were really impressed with it. Um, we were using um squadron putty up until that point, but squadron putty's been a bit hit and miss recently. Um we, we used it on the Lozzer's Droid as well a squadron putty and it was just a mess um, so John had brought this stuff around and we thought we'd try it out and it works brilliantly for droids, well just 3D printing so I picked some up and this is now my go to um, putty filler for small details, I mean obviously large details like that might be better off just guessing the, the milli putt out or the squadron putty is a bit thicker um, or the more you can get more of it out in one go um, but again, I'm not even going to bother fixing that because you're not going to see it. It's uh, one thing; it's at the back, um, so you're not, you're not really going to see it. But yeah, let dry, turn it over, do the other side, and then um, we'll carry on. Right, I think we are ready to start puttying. I've done the other side of that, and it's dry, so now it's just time to start puttying. So, wish me luck. Right, that's the first coat on. I haven't sprayed underneath there, so this is the first coat here. Um, that was a can and three quarters of spray putty. Um, and it will need another coat. I can tell you that now, it needs another coat. Um, yeah, can and three quarters, and then when it dries, I can turn it over and catch like the, the bits under there that I couldn't get whilst well, this, this way around and do the top inside of the ring um, see how I let that dry and then come back and do another coat second coat on and that was about half a can, three quarters of a can um, obviously the first coat was probably the hardest one but that's down so I let that dry and then I think I'll probably turn it over and do the other side just so it's all nice and even Coat number three and can number four, plus uh, the remains of that motor. Um, I've only just opened that, so there's about three quarters of a can left. Um, yeah, there's still a few marks that are visible, but I'm hoping that when I get the sanding done, they'll go away. It's just building layer upon layer. Um, I still want to turn it over to the other side. But getting there, I'm liking it. 
and like it. Right, turned it over, spray the top here. Try to avoid overspraying as much as possible, and yeah, that didn't work. And then given these bits a coat, which were the top, you know, hidden before. Um, just trying to get gap fills mainly. Um, notice that's got a bit damaged. There we go. Try and blend it back in together. I think I've missed a gap here. It's not the best way of doing it, but there we go. Check both sides. Yeah, uh, yeah, there is a bit of a gap. We should have done this with a white putty. Might go back and do that with a white putty. Um, but yeah, it's getting there slowly. Right. So I sanded it back. Um, I started off with a 180 and then I uh, ended up using 80 um, just to get a bit more aggressive. As you can still see, there's still panel line, uh, gap lines there. Um, and also, uh, just here, that's actually a bump. It's a height difference. And that's where these are two separate pieces that are printed and stuck together. It's There's a bump. That's going to be noticeable. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do about that. Um, I might just have to get the file and very carefully just to try and even it out. It only needs to be evened out enough just so the bump goes. And then I've got to go back around the putty and mark those again. Um, but overall, I just realised I haven't sounded that bit at all. Um, overall, I'm pleased. It's, um, it's getting there. For a first pass, it's getting there. So, uh, carry on, I suppose. Right, I've given it a file, um, literally a file, and then a sand with a 80 grit, and it's still a bit of a bump, but it's less noticeable, I think. I won't know until I putty it again. Um, tried filling the gaps again with uh, the plastic putty, so I've got to let that dry, sand it back, and then, um, and then we'll see how we go from there. Right, so I've sanded it all down and there's an unsightly bulge all the way around here where the two pieces went together. I've put white putty sort of on these pieces and I'm much happier with that. Um, there's a step I can't really do much about it but it's the bottom so you're not, not going to see it so much and also battery blocks will be there. So I'm happy with that. I've resprayed the whole thing with putty and I started sanding this bit back and again you're not going to notice some things, but overall I'm happier that's smoother. A lot of the lines are gone across the top and around here as well, I'm happy. However, this bulge is still here. I've gone at it with a file and I thought I'd levelled it out, but it's still very visible. Um, i just put a really heavy spray of putty around here to see if I can try and level it out. Failing that, I'm going to have to get the palm sander out and sand it very, very carefully. So we'll see, but apart from the bulge, Everywhere else is looking fine. So if I can get rid of the bulge, I'm happy. But we'll see what happens. Right. I think I feel happy about that. You can still see the line, but it you know that feels smooth. Right, I can feel the bump, but it's it doesn't look like there's a bump. Likewise here it doesn't look like there's a bump, I think. I mean you can you can still see the the mark of the putty where it's evening out but that feels flat quite flattish but it doesn't feel like there's a, there's a doesn't feel like there's a step up put it that way so I th I'm gonna give it another spray a putty just so everything's evened out and then um, we'll see how it looks I'm hoping that's got rid of it that that was a 100 grit here and then 180 everywhere else and then over here to sort of smooth it out. Um, so yeah, I'll give it another spray of putty and then we'll see how it looks. Uh, not sure. I've only just put the coat down so it hasn't dried, but I'm not sure. Also, this ribbon keeps coming back. It's getting annoying. Oh, you can see that. That keeps coming back. Um, 
I think the last thing to do now really is probably get the plastic putty out and just try and fill that line in. It's the only thing left to do. Um, I mean, short of getting the, the actual palm sander out and sanded it, which at this point is probably going to do more harm than good. Um, just might have to live with it. It's a shame. I might be able to cover some of it with weathering, you know, just sort of hide the bump with dirt, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't think it's as bad as I think. I mean, that. Maybe that might need a little bit more sanding actually, just to get rid of the the old spray mark. Um, but yeah, there's definitely still a line, which at this point is no different than that line, which is barely visible now. Um, so I think that's the plan: plastic putty, and then just gently sand it. Uh, in case you're wondering, that's the end of cam number six. Uh, so it's been six full cans it's actually been eight cans but two of them were um, half cans yeah two of them were half cans plus I had a three quarters of a can works out to be trust me works out to be in six full cans of putty uh, admittedly I've probably done more coats than I really originally intended to because of this issue that I didn't realise I had um, if I'd known this was going to happen I would have sanded this flattened it as much as I could before spraying it um, so I probably could have knocked at least two cans off that um, but yeah I'll leave it to dry uh, I've still got to sand the um, inside of the little orange ring that sort of sits about there on the front I can't turn it around but on the front where R2's vent is Chopper has like an orange vent I need to sand that bit um, I also still need to sand a little coin slot shaped thing as well next to the shield but I can do that with some sandpaper so um, yeah just going to leave it now leave it to dry right, it's a new day and I've run the white plastic putty around here and here and a few other places basically all the way around the join mark and I've now sanded it and it looks uh, there's still a couple of bits I might to go over the sanded paper um, but it looks good the line's gone as far as I can tell and I've also sanded the inside of here and here and here and I just put putty along in there because it's just a bit awkward to get into I just need to let that dry and I'll sand it properly I was tempted to start sanding here and I thought honestly no one's really going to notice too much so once that's primed it'll be hidden in shadow most of the time with the uh, with the utility arm so I'm going to let that putty dry and then give it sand. Um, and I think at that point I'm going to leave it because I'm going to keep knocking bits like here, trying to fix other bits. So I think it's just a case of that's as good as it's going to get and it's trying to prime it. Now I was having a look through some of the colours that he's supposed to use for Chopper and he's majority white apart from a couple of panels. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, I've got a white primer, I think I'll spray with a white primer and see how that looks. It's the same white primer as that. Um, that might be a bit too bright, but we'll see. It's going to get dirtied up anyway. Um, but then with the off offset colours of like this panel and uh, I think this panel, you know, that being yellow and silver and then orange there, it might just start to break it up enough that it won't look too stark white. Um, but we'll see. I put the primer down anyway because I've got to put primer down, and then we'll see how it looks. Uh, but I will sand that first, <laughs> and then primer. Uh, at some point, I've also got to do the doors as well. They are they are around here somewhere. We just need um, sanding, putty, and priming as well, and then they can go in. There's a gap somewhere. Back. Sorry for the pause, I had a child asking me a question. Um, so yeah, before, um, when the, the doors go on, right, I'm going to give up trying to record this without her talking, but um, when the doors go back on, there's a bit of nylon filament that goes through there, and that creates the hinge. And um, 
Sorry, I'm trying my best to do this about <laughs> um, Yeah. Hang and... <laughs> on. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, as I say, nylon filament needs to go through those two holes and they create hinges for the doors. Um, and then obviously they have proper hinges as well. Uh, I say hinges for the doors, they're not. It's where the servos used to open the door and close the door. Um, so that will need to be done at some point. Um, yeah. So sand this bit, prime it. See how we get on. Right, started priming and I ran out of that just to finish this bit here. So I'm just going to get another can of primer, which I need to get anyway to the legs and everything else, but still, that's annoying just from out right there. Um, I know I said I was going to prime in white, but I put the white down and honestly, the coverage was awful. Um, so I switched to grey, which just covered it a lot better. Um, so yeah, get some more grey primer and then uh, finish it off. Okay, that's now been primered. Then got some more primer. Also picked up some colours as well. So hopefully they'll match. But that's looking getting there. Um, of course you can just about still see the bulge line. At this point there's absolutely nothing I can really do about it. Um, what I might be able to do is trick your eye away from it by sort of cutting these out a bit better again. Um, but for now that's probably all I can do. Um, while I've been waiting for that to dry, I've been prepping the resin greeblies. I can't find the front shield. Um, I don't know where it is. So anyway, uh, these have been sanded where needed or filled in case of the front arm. I think that'll just need filing back in when it's dry. I'm going to go have another look for the front shield. Right, the resin greeblies are primed. Well, I need to do the underside of that but and the inside of those, but they're primed. These are the extra body greeblies, live action. They just need um, buttying and then priming and then they can all be stuck onto the body because these are all body colours. Um, these aren't, so they'll be stuck on after they're painted. Uh, yeah, making progress, and that's probably ready to paint, but I want those ready first. Right. Those are puttied, just need sanding. They're fully primed, um, maybe needs tidying up there, don't know, might just get away a little weathering. And I've masked up here the silver, yellow, orange. And you may be wondering why I've gone overboard with the masking tape when there's no other colour down, and it's simply because the Rust-Oleum doesn't seem to like being painted over with any other colour, even itself. So I want to try and put some more masking tape there. I want to try and get all this colour down without getting anything else on the primer, um, without any overspray. That's the idea anyway. So much not overspray. Uh kind of works. The orange I'm happy with. Um, the gunmetal effect that I've done on everything else didn't seem to work very well. And the yellow... no idea. Might even have a coat. But they're on. Okay, so they've been sprayed black and then shot of aluminium. And that works a lot better than the front panel did, so it must be the angle that you spray at. Spray at. Uh, I've run out of black acrylic paint, so I've got some more turned up tomorrow, which will allow me to do that and that. Um, I realise I need uh, some more smaller wires of those, and I think I was always going to use normal wires, you know, just proper wires. So luckily I've got spare wire hanging around for that, and uh, I had to redo that again. Yeah, don't ask, and I'll probably still have to look at it and change it entirely up because it doesn't look right. Something about that yellow. Um, anyway, uh, what's the orange? It's quite grim against the grey, doesn't it? And then obviously there's the gunmetal is there as well, which reminds me. And he's painting that with the gunmetal as well. So all those bits need to be gunmetal. Right, 
I gave up with the yellow. I sanded it back as much as I could or smoothed it out. I actually ended up using cabinet paper and it kind of just smoothed it out and then I could sand it back a bit. So I reapplied a different yellow. That one. And that worked a lot better. Um, yes, I know it's messy around the edges. Not much I can do about that. I'll sort it out after. I'm going to let it dry. I'm not going to push my luck. I'm just going to leave it to dry and then I can tidy it up, including the oversprays. That was more annoying than it should have been. But quite pleased with that. Quite pleased with that. And I'm now pleased with that. Um, so they're ready. It needs to go in there. I think these need to be black, these bits, or at least the same gunmetal. Not sure yet. Uh, also, not sure about the inside of there. Um, we'll see. I might. They look darker on the live action pictures. Um, I've also got to get these bits on as well. And they go like roughly there. So, I think what I'll do is I'll get these primed up epoxy them on and then it can all get painted at the same time um, and I've got to get this bit uh, there as well um, and I think I'm ready to finally start doing the white yeah I think so I'm ready to start doing the white slowly but surely getting there I forgot the orange stripe on the back, so I'm going to do that. I've also, no, I've spun it around, I've also masked off that bit which is going to be um, kind of like a very, very light blue. Um, I bought a blue, so we'll see if it works, but first of all, let's do the orange. Right, so while we wait for the first bit of the orange to dry, um, this is the blue I was on about. It's um, so it's going to go here. Now on the live action chopper, and I'll throw an image up probably about here, it's kind of a very, very light dusty blue. Now that looks almost the same. So there's a wasp flying around. Bye bye. Um, yeah, that looks almost the same, I think. We'll find out. I might have to lighten it up a bit with some white, but we'll see. We'll try it. Um, and so it's going to go here. Right, so I looked again at the picture, and that's the blue when it comes out of the can. Uh, tell you what. That's the blue when it comes out of the can. It's not far off, but I thought, just to be sure, let's give it a white undercoat, um, and then do the blue. I'm not too worried about the overspray of the white, because the body's gonna be white anyway, but um, just to get that bright blue, so leave that dry for a few minutes and then I'll try putting the blue on. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's one coat of Bermuda blue on a coat of white primer. Uh, under a coat, on top, on top of a coat of white primer. I, I like that. that. That works really well. That doesn't seem too far off. So, yeah, I like that. And um, that was the final coat of orange. So we're getting there. Now, I think, I think I'm finally ready to do the white. I've got some more black turned up today to do the insides of these. Um, and so I can do like the, the rest of the arm and all the other bits of uh, green piece. And I printed out the new versions of these. I'm using Terry's versions of these raised bits. Some winding work. Um, which means at some point I need to drill a hole here for an LED. Um, but yeah, I think I'm ready to do white. I don't think there's any other colours on the body I'm missing, apart from the doors. Uh, yeah, so I just let that dry off slightly and then um, I may give it another shot just to even the colour out. And then, um, yeah, let it dry enough for me to mask it and then we can do the white. I shouldn't take long in this heat. Right, so while I'm waiting for the paint to dry and so I can get out the heat for a little bit, Let's talk about the other colours on Chopper's body. So I'm going for Citroen Polar White, which is the same white I used in my BB or my first BB-8, and it's kind of like a, an off creamy white. So I think that kind of matches the body colour for Chopper. 
Um, I've got a funny feeling it seems to be the standard sort of white, or I say it's not specifically citron polar white, but it's um, it seems to be a standard white that's being used at the moment. I mean, um, Dio is done in that white. Um, it's kind of like a very off white, um, which would be BBA, but I don't own that sphere anymore. So that's going to be the body. Um, I had these two already anyway. Uh, I picked these two up because I find this double double acrylic stuff goes through quicker than a normal can. So now we talk about the greys. Um, so I'll probably I'll probably bring the picture back up on the screen somewhere. Um, I'm going to use this on the dark grey of the legs. I think that's the closest. Um, now the cap looks lighter, but uh, in B and Q they had that. Uh, little bits of wood that have been painted all the colours and it seemed quite dark. So I think that will match with, um, the uh, left leg, you know, the one with the, the, the curve on the shoulder. This one uh, I'm going to use on the skirt. It's kind of, it's, it's hard to tell from the photos because I've got two different, I've got lots of photos from when he came on stage and depending on the lighting it looks different colours so I think it's kind of like a khaki grey. Um, that's the best way I can describe it, and I know khaki isn't even a grey, but it's the best way I can describe it. So this looked similar, probably not quite right, but similar. But I think with the grey undercoat, it might it it might pass. Um, and then I've got this dove grey as well, which uh, will be for the other leg and for the um, inserts of the doors. And there's something else on the body that's probably got that sort of kind of a, that very very light grey accent. Again, um, I'm guessing just on the colour of the label because I, I can't spray cans and Halford they don't seem to like that. Um, don't know why, but again, I think that'd be better in Halfords if they had like the board up with the actual colours spray colours on. But anyway, so I'm thinking this is kind of going to be my light grey for the for the body for the leg, dark grey for the leg, and then fossil. This one's called. Um, so stone grey fossil. So I think fossil is going to be my skirt and door panels. Although it could potentially be that colour for the door panels. It could be a mixture of the both. Uh, yeah. So le left leg, right leg. Uh, sorry, right leg, skirt, body. And I think I've covered all the colours. I've got. If there are any other colours in there, I've, I've got cans in there or things that I can just use. Um, Citadel paints, you know, just because there'll be little bits, if, especially if it's like a, you know, like a tiny bit of yellow or a tiny bit of red. Um, so yeah, that's the colours I'm going with. Whether they're right or not, we'll see. But this is kind of this. This is the. This is the lineup. Okay, something I wasn't paying attention to when I was spinning it around when it was the other way is uh, I scraped it against the bricks. So I just need to quickly fix that. Um, oh, I've masked off that and the blue on the other side. So I'm just going to quickly reprime this, and then um, I'm going to put the khaki down, which is all the way up to this point. But before I spray the khaki, I'm going to put the um, live action greeblies on, which are sort of ones there. And I might move it here so I can get this door open still. Um, there's two around the other side, and then that we sprayed that. Um, fossil colour. So um, uh, I may have mucked up slightly, so I've stuck these on, um, put a bit too much resin so now that's got to dry all around here, sanded, reprimed, and then we get to here where I went, it needs to start at the edge of the hole. So of course I stuck it on the edge of that hole, not this hole. So anyway, I've got to leave that completely dry so I can sand it, same on the top, but they're stuck on, so is that. And then on the back, um, how, I, how you can see that, um, how are you looking at that at all? There we go. So as you can see I've stuck that one on, it should be more central to this and I've stuck that on, but if I do that I can't get the back off. So. I've moved it slightly, hopefully you can just see that, and you weren't just looking at a different part of the droid. So yeah, and I've got to let that dry, shouldn't take long, and then sand it, reprime it, and then I can spray it. 
So um, I guess we're leaving it again. So bright side, while I'm waiting for that to dry, my black has turned up. So I sprayed the front panel, the new groovy back panel, and the utility arm. And then they'll get the gunmetal treatment. Right, that's dry. I've sanded it, repainted it, and yeah, a tiny bit of bump, but you're not going to notice it. So I think I am now ready. Oh, instantly, these two bits appear to be kind of like a metallic khaki colour. So I think I might paint them the same fossil as I'm about to do here. Um, or maybe do the lighter colour, not sure yet. Um, and I sprayed one side of that with a gunmetal. And I think I've already showed you that. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to spray the fossil on the top of here. Wish me luck. Right, I think I'm ready. Save some masking tape. Right, that's the first coat on. Um, yeah, I like the colour. I think it's actually probably more suitable for the leg than the skirt, but we'll see. It's hard to compare without the rest of the colours on it. Um, yeah, it went down nicely. Notice there's probably a couple of gaps I should have filled in first, but never mind. Um, so yeah, just in case I hadn't, you know, I had shown you. Rustoleum Painter's Touch Fossil. So yeah, leave it to dry and give it another coat and then we'll see. Should darken off slightly, if I remember right. Right, so I've done a couple of coats and it's not going quite as dark as I thought it would. Um, so the one on the photos is more sort of like a grey green. This is I should expect stone coloured. Um, I guess B&Q's copy of it has just aged over the years with UV. So um, I've done a comparison test. So that's the fossil. That's the uh, what's it called? Ford Dove Grey, and that's the stone grey. Um, none of them really. I think they'll. I think they'll work. I just think it just means the colour's going to be very slightly off. What they were on. The, what they are on the, um, the live action version. I suppose the other thing to say to that is, I don't really know what the true colours are because the lighting kept changing in different photos. So this could be right. It could be darker. It could actually be green for all I know. Or it could actually be properly grey. Just have to be prepared to repaint it. So I'm going to keep this colour for now. Um, it's not quite ready to take that off, so I can do the white. Um, I don't know if to give it another coat. No, I think that's probably enough coats. It's two, and it seems to be fine. So yeah, I'll um, give it a few more minutes, and I'll take the take the newspaper off. Oh, I guess we're ready for the white. Um, still not sure to do about the insides of these. Um, I don't know, we'll, I'll, I'll think about it afterwards, but let's get some white down. Right, that's the first coat down. Uh, that was a whole can of that stuff. I'm not too keen on this double concentrate. It says it got twice the coverage, and actually, I think it's probably got less coverage than a normal full size can. But anyway. So that's the first coat down. I'll let that flash off and then we'll um, put some more coats down. Right, that's two coats down, but this horrible line's back again. I, uh, I just had enough. I'm just not, not, not going to worry about it. I can't do anything about it. Not now. So I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist. I will cover it with weathering or something, or I'll find a way. I mean, at least the leg will be in the way here, and yeah, I'll find a way of covering it up. Uh, but yeah, two coats, and as you can see, it's kind of like, a, as, as I said, it's kind of like an off white. I've deliberately not tried to spray in here too much because I'm going to be changing that colour anyway. Um, 
I need to turn it over in a minute and then spray the top inside the top ring and so we'll get the underside of here and uh, the underside of here and the underside of the inside of there oh and the underside of these bits as well uh, but that was a whole nearly a whole of a can again just do a second coat there we go that's three coats um, I am annoyed at that line I tried so hard to get rid of it uh, no, I have to live with it now won't I that's annoying anyway three coats Three coats, three well, three and a half cans. I found a half can of Halfords. Um, I just need to turn it back over again in a second, give a make sure I've got the undersides of the cutouts done properly, and then uh, I can take the masking off. Yeah, it's like the masking here and that sort of thing. But yeah, it's looking good, I think, apart from that. Right, apart from the doors, I think that's the main painting of the body done. Um, although, I need to darken this. Yeah, okay, so the painting's not done. And those are printed, they just need adding on, but they're going to paint those separately and stick them on. But, yeah, doors, I've run out of po uh, Citroen Polo White, so I need to all get some more of that to be able to do the doors. Um, Yes, yeah, get in there slowly. I'm trying not to touch it too much because I'm leaving finger marks. Uh, yeah, not finger marks, but like dirt marks. Um, and I'm still not sure about this colour. It's growing on me. And when it's the other way around in the shadow, it kind of looks like the right colour. So maybe, maybe it is. You know, if I dirty it up, it will look. It will work. I mean, the white's going to be dirty up anyway. Um, so, yeah, um, and it's all I can do for now until the paint properly dries. And I can have a look at um, darkening the insides of these bits and possibly the inside of there as well. And uh, adding in the greeblies. Also, still need to draw that hole there and the two on the back for the LEDs. Um, I think everything else is going to be weathering, really. Um, I'm going to paint the uh, dome head nod ring gear ring as well because that's visible so it needs to be painted silver um, other than that yeah it's just detail work now mainly and it's got its quirks every droid does I mean I keep getting hung up on those bowl signs it's got its quirks but ultimately every droid is different Everybody has different issues with their droid or things they don't like, and mine will be no different. So, yeah, I'm going to leave this dry and then I'll pick it up again tomorrow. Right, so I had another look at the places where the greebies go at the bottom of the body, and they're not dark, but they're not white either. So, I think they're actually the same colour as the one of the legs, the right leg. So, I've got the right leg colour masked it off and I sprayed the inside of that just lightly one coat I think that's all it needs and then um, I'll take all this off and we'll see how it looks if it doesn't look good I'll just paint it white again um, but yeah we'll see how it looks well I think that looks all right um, so I'll, I'll put the a couple of the greebies in and turn it back the other way and see how it looks okay yeah I think that works I like that. Uh, paintbrush maybe. But yeah, I like that. I think it will look the same there as well. Yeah, okay. I'm happy with that. Breaks the white up a bit as well. Alright, I'm going to start with the doors now while well, it's cool enough. Um, I've just given them a quick sound to try and get rid of the major bumps. And then the spray putty. 
and let it dry, turn it over. Do you know what? I probably won't bother spray putty in the back. Might just prime it. Definitely spray putty the front anyway. Uh, let it dry. I'm not going to do anything else tonight, it's probably a bit too much. And then um, maybe tomorrow, prime it. And then we can look at installing them into the door, into the body. Right, those have been sanded and resprayed, and this one looks okay. This one has only just gone down, but I can see a slight mark there still, so I might have to give that another sand. Uh, other than that, the rest of it seems fine. Oh, wait, there's another bit there. But anyway. Uh, anyway, they seem fine. Apart from this head popping that bit. Um, so once that bit's sanded and resprayed, I'll um, give it a coat of primer and prime the other side as well. I'm not too fussed about getting rid of the print lines because you're not going to see it that much. Um, I, I might get rid of the print lines. I'm convincing myself I now to get rid of the print lines. Anyway, let's set these dry. While I'm waiting for that to dry, something else I'm going to look at is breaking the colour up a bit on here. I had another look at the live action versions of these, and there's like a I say gold band there and a gold band there. It's probably more bronze, but um, I'm going to replicate that. Just put it on there and there. It shouldn't take long. There we are. I'm happy with that. Just a bit of, bit of colour change. I didn't have a bronze, so I've just gone straight aluminium and I'll probably use Dirty Down to try and make it look a bit more sort of goldy, bronzy colour. Um, but no, I like that. Maybe I should have done that as well, but as it is, I'm happy with those. Yeah, just a bit of colour change, so it doesn't look quite so uniform. And that's the front side of those primed. I'll let that dry thoroughly, and then I'll do the other side. Um, and I suppose we we'll talk about the door slightly. So one of these doors, so if we assume this is the left-hand side, that is that kind of light grey, dove grey that I used on the inside of the cutouts, where the boobies go. On this one, that bit is the dark grey like the fossil that I used on the skirt and then the opposite bits are white so that frame's white that inside's white um, so they are the doors are different but we'll come to that in a bit right that's the initial coat of the two doors done um, once that's dry I'll flip the masking over and do the white around there and the light dove grey around there Oh, I need to spray the backs as well. Right, those are painted. Uh, just got to wait for it to dry and paint the other side. As I said, that's the. Hang on, where is that? This is the right hand door, that's the left hand door. And that's using the fossil, which is the same colour as the, um, the skirt. And this is using the dove grey, which is the same colour as what will be the left leg. Sorry, the right leg. Yeah, right door, left door. It's the right leg and um, is also what I use as the shadow colour in the Greebly Bay. So yeah, let those dry, turn them over, paint them white, attach the hinges, and then I'm um, going to hook them up to the body. There we go, just giving a quick spray of white on the back, let that dry, um, and then yeah, put the hinges on I guess. Right, so the doors are painted on both sides, and I've attached the hinges. Um, as you can see, the top hinge has a little hole here for the nylon filament. The bottom hinge doesn't. Sorry, I, I appear to have moved next to a racetrack overnight. Um, so, anyway, enough opinion about that. So the, the hinges go in here, and you kind of just sort of they, they do go in, right, so they kind of pop in like that, um, and then, as I said before, you drop some nylon filament through there, and that creates the the hinge going down. Sorry, the camera is probably not helping much. Um, so hopefully, if um, a bit concerned that wasn't really moving very well. So, I, just, uh, I might need to tidy up the edges of the. Oh no, they're fine. 
What's going on here then? So those should swing out and not get caught, but they don't seem to be doing that. Um, okay, anyway, so they go in there like that, and as I said, just place that back in. Easy to do this off camera. Um, right, that door goes there, <laughs> and this door goes there. So it seems already a door goes in there. And then around here, I was just going to show. Where are we looking here? So this bit here, the servo goes in there. And so you can see it just there next to the threaded rod. There's a little, little notch just there by my finger. That's where the nylon comes out from that you've attached to the top hinge and um, the servo's here and it sort of pulls the door open like that so that'll be closed and then it releases and that'll let the door open or open the door that's the idea behind it anyway um, so I think the next stage is to thread the nylon through that hole there and then seal the edge so it doesn't come away get these into the door properly and then feed the nylon through there and then uh, in this case of just doing the servo on there well on both sides and then I can hook that utility arm up put the servo on the back there and then we're um, I think we're pretty much done at that point right I fed the nylon filament the same stuff I used on the um, dome arms. I fed it through the little hole here and then I used a soldering iron um, to basically melt it to the end. I've done the same on the other side as well. So it's melted to there. I've then put a little dab of super glue on the end just to make sure and a little dab of super glue here um, which I've now got on my fingers and that should stop it moving back and forth and then this bit gets threaded in through the little hole on the body and then we just thread some more nylon filament through um, through these holes here, which go through the top holes on the body I showed you earlier. And then that is the door. Doors. Right, can you kind of see what I mean? So the nylon thread gets threaded through that little hole and pops out the other end. And then the hinge goes in like this somehow. Right, and super glue on your fingers. So it goes in like that. Right, and then another bit of nylon filament goes through here. And that's going through the hinges. And it's got stuck at the bottom hinge at the moment, so you just need to, as Mike says in the instructions, just kind of wiggle it around a bit and it will go in. Probably easier to finish it off this off camera, but you kind of get the idea. So here we go, kind of like this I like that so uh, yeah so the next thing to do would be to put the servo on and uh, do the other door uh, incidentally I'm having trouble getting the filament in through this gap here because I think this print got very very slightly warped here so I need to find something to go through. I was trying to use that, but it's not quite long enough. It's sort of somewhere around about here the problem is. But anyway, the theory sounds, and I'm going to snip that off and leave a little bit showing. So if I need to pull it out, I can. Um, it appears to be all the way down the bottom. And I think I'm okay there. Do I want to leave a little bit showing because that's going to be visible? Ooh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Okay, uh, I'll think about that one. 
Right, I've just given the edge of the dome ring a spray of aluminium and I've even sprayed the edge of the slip ring, uh, not slip ring, the Lazy Susan, which I know is already aluminium, but at least the colour matches, because you can just about see the Lazy Susan when the, the head's tilting slightly, so the colours will match. Um, I didn't even prime it, I just sprayed the aluminium straight on. Um, probably should have primed it, but honestly you're not really going to see it that much. And if it chips a bit, then it chips a bit. Put it down to weathering. So yeah, I've just sprayed the edge and you can see I've oversprayed, but I've just sprayed the edge. I'll let that dry and then that can get ready to go back into the body. Alright, I finally got that bit in. Um, I had to use a uh, the thing I used to unclog the 3D printer. So, um, oh, I can't think what it's called at the moment. Basically just like a long thin stick. It looks like a skewer, but, but you use it to unclog 3D printers from the top end um, rather than using the little thin things from the other end uh, so anyway, push that through and it eventually got through I'm not convinced it's all the way down um, mainly because this seems to be the default position it could just be, you know, if I pull it tight if I pull that tight it stays shut um, so I'm hoping the servo sorts that um, yeah, but it's in it's done, it was, it was more of a pain than I wanted but it's in uh, the next step is I'm going to put that on. So I need to remove that little screw there, which will allow me to take this out. Uh, in case that's too much covered in paint, I do have a resin version, which I might use. And then that will go into there, through there. And there's two little screw holes that go through there, which if I just spin this around, you can just see the two screw holes there. And that's sort of what attaches it all together. And then uh, we mount the servo on the back of here, which I'll do in a minute. And then uh, centre the servo, that the closed position is at centre. And the gears match up, match up with that. Uh, and then I'll come back to the doors and add the servos on these sections here. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the putty to dry on the fingers of the arm, I thought I'd come back and look at these bits. So they're um, MG90s that open the doors. Um, rather, I've got these ones, but effectively they are MG90s. You then use the um, that servo horn glued into this bit, uh, which I haven't glued yet, but it basically pushes through there, and then you just snip off the end. The filament gets wrapped around, oops, so it gets wrapped around there, and then there's a little M3 screw and M3 screw square nut that goes in there and that holds it in place um, and then as oops, sorry, and then as that pulls it pulls the door closed or open um, and the servo itself gets mounted I think I'll have to double check I think it gets mounted this is very hard to do one handed this is why I normally do the big camera for this sort of stuff um, it gets mounted sort of like that. Um, <laughs> sorry, this is fiddly one hand. It gets mounted like that, pretty much. Or maybe underneath. Uh, but anyway, it, it gets mounted in like that. And then this is that screw hole there goes into the goes into that screw hole just there. So I think order operations is. Uh, this gets screwed into the body first. I'm going to double check on the instructions. And then um, obviously this needs centering. And that needs epoxying in. I need to screw the hole out a bit bigger. Um, and in this case it's just an M3 screw and an M3 nut, square nut, and I've got plenty of those. And then um, that with the doors done. But that's really simple and I'm half tempted to try and retrofit it to R2. At the moment, R2's doors are glued shut. They're hinged, but they're glued shut. But if I can ad adapt this mechanism to it, I quite like the idea of using the nylon filament. And obviously, I can't put it in for the hinges, but for the, the pull bit, that makes things so much easier. Um, so, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do this bit. Right, I, s I centered the servo. And as you can see, the focus, the bottom of the, the, the actual servo horn is at the bottom. The 
so I've cut the bottom of the servo horn off so it's pointing down essentially like that and then uh, I think this is the right way around so that then goes in there the red wire goes through that little hole with, and then the square nut and screw clamps it down um, so essentially that just, servo just needs screwing in now as I said I've already centered it so it should just be fine um, so we'll put it in a try Okay, so I think that's right. The uh, string's gone through there, and then, well, actually, you know, that might be the wrong way around. That might, that might be the other side. Anyway, yeah, so the idea being that um, the server then turns and pulls the door, and then, yeah, do you know what? That is the wrong way around, isn't it? Okay, I'll flip that around to the other side. <laughs> so this one should be over that side, and it should be over this side. Um, but that's the general idea. So the string goes through there, that clamps it down, and then the servo opens and closes it. Right, those are added in. Um, so the trick is you um, attach that to the servo, you then slide uh, the filament through the hole with this already halfway through, you then screw the servo onto the servo bracket, pull that as tight as you can while the servo is powered up and it's, it's important to powered up because if you apply too much pressure pulling this you'll pull the servo out of out the center you, which probably isn't too much an issue really thinking about it but um you want it to stay you want it at 1500 so while it's powered up you pull that tight pull this tight and then screw that down as far as you can without breaking the epoxy connection you just created here um, and then you should be good to go. Uh, it took me a few attempts and um, they're in. My only, seems a bit looser, my, my only concern is that if I power the servo up and then open the door, the door only opens part way before it hits the limit of um, what the servo tester can do. And I'm fairly sure I remember reading somewhere or hearing somewhere that the um, Maestro can take a servo beyond what a servo tester does. Failing that, uh, what I can do is um, is reset these. Is basically take them out, reset them to say that um, the full the full way back. So say in this case uh, 800, which would be pointed that way, is the closed position, and then 2200, which is the that way, is the open position, and then the reverse for the other side. And that way, it just means that when the servo powers up and the maestro powers up, the maestro says go to 800, not 1500, and that keeps the door closed. That might be the way to do it, but we'll, we'll see. Um, I've also got this pin out, and shock horror, when you paint the pin, you can't get the pin out. So I broke the pin, but as I said, um, as you can see here, I broke it trying to get it out, and I broke the bottom cap. As I said, I do have a resin version of it, so I'll be um, popping that in instead. Once I finish painting the, um, the the little pincer clip-ons add-ons, uh, that took me longer than I was expecting, but they're in, they're done, so it doesn't matter. Right, those have been painted black, so I'm now going to mask off um, what isn't the gripper, and then give that a light dust of the aluminium, so it matches the rest of the rest of the arm, and then I'll just stick them on. Sprayed that and stuck it on. Um, I like that effect, but it kind of gets lost when you see the original arm. Um, I may find I might just take it off and just respray the, the bit on top, bit underneath, and leave it like that. I don't know. It looks alright. So, the next step is this bit. We'll need to go through, we'll, we'll go through there. Um, but also through there as well at the same time. So I'll hook that up and then the next, and then obviously uh, that gets rehooked back here up. And then we put the servo on there with the, with the gearing. Uh, right, so I've been having some fun. Um, I'm currently reprinting this and this. The resin one snapped, I thought it might, it might be strong enough. But in the process of snapping, it also snaps the arm off there. And 
Um, I was a little surprised to see re uncured resin pouring out, so it poured all over the floor. So I managed to drain all that out and I've re-glued it back together. It looks a mess. Um, I'm going to have to cover that with weathering. On the bright side, the utility arm is now lighter, which means it's now no longer... Well, it will be once that's in properly. It's no longer scraping ac across there, um, which is the whole point of me trying to tighten up that thing, which led to the resin one snapping. Now, I wrecked this one trying to get it out, so I'm printing a new one. It should, should be about 40 minutes. And then I can try putting it back together again. In the meantime, I've attached the servo bracket and the MG996R to there and I've got the utility arm servo and I'm going to epoxy that in and then that sits there and then with the gear it will move the arm open and closed. That's the theory anyway. So I'll go epoxy that. I need to make sure that's centered as well and hopefully by the time I've done all that that'll be finished and I can put the arm together properly and then I think I'm done for the moment. I'm going to take a break because I'm getting annoyed with it. But it starts to look a bit more like chopper just with the arm in there, isn't it? Um, while I'm also waiting, I'm going to put these on these are the body grieve release. So M3 square nut goes in there, and then M315 to screw it through the body. And hopefully that should work, and it's not going to be another case of they just don't fit. But we'll see in a minute. Right, something I forgot to mention is that these two pieces need to join together and they use the grub screw and epoxy method so there's two grub screws in there so two holes in there and just join them together let it dry and the cables glue on so um, they can be glued on after so once that's dry I can stick this on the body and then glue the cables in right the utility arms on the servo horns on um, for some reason the screws that came with the servo aren't biting into there properly so there is a bit of there is a bit of wobble um, not ideal I mean I could take the screws out and put the rubber bungs in but I don't think that'll actually help because it's not physically biting into the plastic uh, however using the servo motor it does actually open the door, open the arm which is not a problem uh, like the doors it only opens to about there so you know sort of about like that so I think with the maestro it might open it a little bit further but I mean to be fair it doesn't need to open that far anyway um, as you can see I've got that in uh, little tip if you're using resin printed versions of these uh, M3 times 12 not 15s um, the, the, there's nothing to bite into you start breaking the resin so 12s are more than enough and they're in as well and the bigger cables are glued in I still need to make smaller cables um, and I'm just going to use bits of random wiring and paint it the same colour and then just stick it in. It's easier to try and print it. Um, so that's all that done. That's that done. I still need to trim this bit off and, and that bit there. Um, so I need to reattach the maestro. Oh, sorry, attach the maestro. Hook those up. And... Oh, I need to stick the back greeblies on. Um, and then I think putting the electronics back in, and I think then that's well, apart, apart from this bit which we talked about earlier, I think the body's done. Um, I know some of you might be looking at this and going, Oh, it looks too clean, looks too bright. And I agree, it does look clean and bright. Um, essentially, he's brand new at the moment, he's already getting his weathering. <laughs> The, the arm scrapes along there and there. I've put a little rubber grommet under there to try and raise it up, but it's it's not really helping. Um, I think that's just, it's just a flaw of the utility arm. There's a lot of weight resting on that one point. I mean, R2 has the same problem. Um, there's just a lot, it's all, it's balanced, sorry, it's, it's swinging from there and all this weight is pulling down on it. Um, so there's not much we can do about it really but I'm pleased it's looking like chopper right then I've stuck the panel on straight-ish um, 
Part of me really wanted to just put it the original animated way, but this is now a live action chopper, or my, my version of a live action chopper, so that's staying. Um, so I put those wires on. I've, I'll show you the wires and I spray painted in a minute. And I stuck that bit on. And the green bit that goes here, I've marked where I need to draw some holes. Um, I'm only going to draw three mil holes, and there'll be some um, one or two LEDs just on the other side. Um, and they'll be wired directly into probably the receiver just to get five volts. And then, um, yeah, that's uh, that means that the back's inaccessible for me to put the um, put the electronics board back on. So I need to drill that, put the LEDs in, and then I can get back to the electronics board. Uh, what else? Uh, I mentioned that already. So yeah, um, the wiring here. So I'll show you what I've done so far. So what I've done is got hold of some old um, electrical wiring, spray painted it black. Yes, I know I could use just black wire and done the same effects, but never mind. And then just give it a shot of the silver. So all I'll do now is I'll chop that up and just super glue it into place. And I'll probably do that now. There we are. I'm kind of pleased with that. Let's try and get it in the light a bit more. So all I did was just cut the wire to more or less length and just snip bits off until it fit. And I don't mind there's kinks. I don't mind it's different colors or different variations. It just shows it's wire. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It kinks, it bends, it it goes into odd shapes, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Right, so as you can see, I've stuck that on. Um, I drilled two, so I marked, as you saw before, I marked through here where I need to drill. I've drilled two M3 holes in those positions, which was scary. And then I've Zoom in a bit. Boop. I've just put in two uh, clear three mil LEDs wired together with a 47 ohm resistor on the positive end, and then connected to the end of that just a servo connector, and that'll plug into the receiver. I've tested it, it works, I just can't do it while holding the camera, so you have to trust me. But it lights up quite nicely. Um, so now all I'm going to do is just put some hot glue around there to hold it in place. It does make repairs a bit hard, but then saying that, the electronics board is going to be in the way. Um, I've bent the wires down as flat as possible, because again, the electronics board is going to be in the way. I don't want this sticking out. And this is probably going to plug into the receiver, or because I made the wire quite long, it might reach the maestro. We'll see. Right, so I very, very carefully drilled a 5mm hole. Uh, I used the piece that I printed earlier, that, you know, the, the covers that go over here. I've used that as a guide to where to put it. Um, even though I'm going to put in resin versions on, they should be the same. So that's drilled through. And you can just about see an LED. Flip it around this way. There you, go, you can see the LED there. Yeah, you can see the LED there. It's just a clear LED with a 150 ohm resistor on it. And that's wired directly into the Maestro on the last connection. And I tested it and it works, so I'm happy with that. The next stage now is, um, oh, I need to hot glue that in, but um, the next stage now is to put the electronics board back in. And I think after that, I can put the dome slip ring back on. Sorry, the, the dome ring back on. I don't think there's anything else I need to do to the body other than that. Right, electronics board's back in. The slip ring adapter has been hot glued in. And the wiring's set off to the Maestro. Uh, the battery is just lodged in at the moment because I still need to take the, the screw for the casters underneath the battery. So there's no point putting the battery in fully yet. Um, and I still need to tidy up the wiring but it's all back in here. So let's see what happens. We've got power to the battery. Ready? Ooh.
Anything? Should we get noises? I'm not getting any noises. There you go. That was weird. Anyway, so we have the red LED there. Let's spin it around. Got the red LEDs there. And then the LEDs to show that there's power motors dome is on. And that's, that's actually a lot brighter than I thought it was going to be. That's good. Um, so as I said, the, that's not in properly and these need zip tying up, um, especially now I've got the speaker cables back in. Um, yeah, so the next step would be to put the Lazy Susan back on. Although I must admit I'm half tempted to do that when I go to reassemble the body completely, just because it's a bit easier to get into the shopper's body without the Lazy, without the lazy Susan in the way. So, in fact, actually, I think that will be what I do. So, although the body's not finished, because I need to wait for the resin to be put into that, I am going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.